Okay, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Ravi. He is our guest speaker um, for the June Move with SAE Mobilis series. He's the editor in chief for the SAE Journal of Aerospace. Welcome, Ravi. Hey, uh, Angie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. We can oh, okay, hear good. you. Very good. I've been having some problems with my headset of late, but it yeah. looks like it's <laughs> okay. Hey, nope. uh, yeah, th thanks a lot for inviting me. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about this, uh, uh, the Journal of Aerospace. And uh, let's let's get started. I'll give you an introduction to what this is. And I'll, uh, the main idea, the main goal of this is to excite you all to contribute papers to this and make this a more exciting journal. So hopefully at the end of this, I would have uh, achieved that goal. Okay, so the aim of the uh, uh, Aerospace Journal, as I think Kim mentioned a little as well, is uh, uh, to highlight the research within the aerospace industry and academia as well. So we have uh, three major uh, uh, constituencies, the academia, research, and government uh, uh, entities, as well as research labs. And we go from the historic uh, uh, aerospace uh, uh, technology to the future. It's obviously we are a future looking uh, uh, organization. We do look at uh, topics that are uh, coming up in the future and that are exciting our community. So we would like to, and I'll talk a little more about that uh, uh, soon. Okay, so here is a, a sort of an eye chart of what we have been working on currently, which is on left, and you can see all the normal uh, topics like flight controls, propulsion, reliability, rotorcraft, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and it's 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 a very structured as uh, aerospace is. And to the right, it's getting a little more uh, unstructured, I would say. The future is not quite as clear uh, as uh, uh, aerospace has been for the last hundred years. So that's why I've sort of scattered these things about. It's not that we are losing focus about on uh, of all the topics on the left. No, those will continue, but we will certainly uh, emphasize and focus more on the new items that are coming up. And you saw uh, some of that highlighted in the edge reports like uh, urban air mobility. Kim talked about that as one of the special uh, uh, issues. We, I'll talk a little more about that as well. Electric propulsion, uh, the two uh, edge reports that uh, were highlighted uh, dealt with uh, electric propulsion, and that's something that we definitely are going to uh, highlight more in the future. There's also the concept of digital twin and digital thread, and we are planning a special issue probably next year on that topic. Uh, data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, definitely something that is uh, on everybody's mind. Uh, SAE has started a new technical committee called G34 on uh, AI and uh, aerospace, uh, of which I am a, a member. We are developing standards for certification of AI systems within uh, aerospace, within aviation. So that, that would be something of uh, 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 importance for us, for this community in the future. Clearly, smart manufacturing. We are not just about operations. We are about uh, manufacturing and the supply chain as well. So you will see that uh, uh, there are articles related to that. And certification is going to be a big, become a big deal, including model-based methods for certification. And uh, we are actually thinking about starting a new SAE technical committee on this, on mo modeling and simulation. And uh, we, we hope that uh, that would be of interest to both the uh, uh, academic community as well as the industrial. Obviously, the industry is really interested in that and clearly so are the regulators. And uh, we did talk about autonomy. That would be uh, of imp uh, interest to us. And in general, in, in, in with the digital twin, digital uh, thread, the whole entire digitalization of uh, the aerospace uh, ecosystem is of importance to um, uh, the community. And certainly we are we are expecting to get more uh, papers in that area. So what happens because of this is that we need to add to the, <laughs> uh, the editorial board uh, or with people who are 
uh, experts in these new areas. So certainly you can see the list of, uh, we have actually expanded the editorial board quite a lot in the last couple of years, uh, but we, we, we are looking for more people, especially in the areas that I highlighted, autonomy, electric propulsion, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, digitalization, model-based uh, certification, and uh, uh, and topics in that area. Uh, so to summarize, I guess, uh, research labs, we need more people from there. We only have one person right now from NASA, Ames. Uh, the new market area, uh, uh, urban air mobility, air taxis, uh, and, 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 and such. We have mostly, uh, we, we do have a good, uh, representation from outside the US, but because of historical reasons, where it, it's still heavily uh, uh, US based, we would like to expand it to more uh, uh, international participants. And also this is OEM based, so we would like to uh, expand it to uh, uh, suppliers as well, tier one, tier two suppliers. I think they're going to be very important in the future. Uh, Kim, mentioned uh, the special issues that uh, uh, we have published. Here are a couple that we, they are in the pipeline. It's still, uh, you, you can still uh, submit to these uh, till the end of the month. Maybe there will be an extension as well if uh, uh, people ask us, but do not hesitate just because uh, it's beyond June 30th. Uh, do not uh, assume that you, the, the window has closed. But uh, the two special issues that we are planning are, uh, uh, I'm sorry, these are the ones that uh, I, 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 <laughs> I misspoke. These are the ones that we have just published. And Kim mentioned this. This is the one on uh, sustainable aviation, uh, guest edited by uh, Professor Karakoch, uh, Professor Stamolis, and Professor Toran. And the special issue on uh, the joint issue with the PHM Society on uh, prognostics and health management in the aerospace uh, domain. Uh, Dr. Kulkarni and Dr. Uh, Kai Gobel were the special editors for this. And these are the two uh, special issues that are coming up. Uh, 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 I, I apologize for that. Uh, so Nyanesh Rajpathak and Mark Roboff are the special editors for the AI and machine learning and deep learning in aerospace special issue. Again, June 30th is the end of the month is the deadline. However, if you have, if you need some more time, just let us know and we will accommodate you. And Andy Wallington, Chris Johnson, uh, George Romansky and Dr. PK are the uh, guest editors for the next one uh, on unmanned air systems. Uh, U.S. and autonomy. This is going to be a very exciting uh, uh, special issue. Please do uh, consider submitting uh, uh, papers to these. We want to make this uh, very uh, uh, convenient. So there is the link right here. Uh, you will get this PDF. So just click on that and submit your uh, papers. Uh, I think that is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's that's it. Um, yeah, I do have a couple questions for you, Ravi, and then I, I know we're sure. going to start getting some questions from the audience. Um, first of all, if anyone in the audience, Kim had mentioned she couldn't hear me. Ravi, I know you can hear me. If anyone else can't hear me, please let me know. <laughs> I can um, hear you loud and clear. <laughs> excellent. Um, so on the screen here, I did include some of Ravi's other publications. Beth Ellen mentioned it earlier as well. He has a couple edge research reports. And then he has two book publications with us. Um, so I've put embedded those links in here. And then as far as questions, I thought, let's see, Kim still can't hear me. Um, Can she hear me? Yeah, that's odd. Give me one second here. Uh, Amy said she can hear me. So <laughs> I'm not sure, Kim, I'm sorry you can't hear me. Um, yeah, I guess some people from the audience can. Perhaps there's some feedback. Okay, thank you, Dwayne. So most of the audience can hear me. That's good. Um, okay, so some of the questions that I had segmented for you. Uh, what made you get involved as editor-in-chief in the first place with the SAE Journal of Aerospace? Uh, 
<laughs> I confess, I did. I I did not solicit this. Uh, uh, SAE actually invited me to become the okay. Asia in chief. So, uh, and and uh, spec uh, I I should mention Monica Nagera and uh, Professor uh, Muhammad Al Sayed. They were the ones mm -hmm. who uh, invited me, and I'm 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 grateful, and I'm I'm really happy I took on the job challenge because this has taught me a lot, and hopefully I'll make a difference. Excellent. I'm glad you're enjoying it so far. How long have you been the editor in chief of the journal? Since December 2017, I believe. Oh, okay. A couple years. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So some of the, you presented on two special issues, which are due to come out this month. One is on AI, machine learning, and deep learning. What about that issue in particular are you excited about? Uh, so I just want to correct one thing. It's not coming out this month. It's well, I'm, we are still soliciting papers oh, for it until the end of this out. month. Yes, it'll come out. Hopefully, uh, Kim can correct me if I'm wrong, but it'll come out by the end of this year. Hopefully, uh, okay. uh, most probably maybe beginning of next year. So that's that's the plan. Okay. Uh, what is exciting about it? It's 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 the wild west as far as I can make out. Mm -hmm. Everybody, especially in the in electric propulsion, urban air mobility is. You cannot fly a plane today without at least considering uh, autonomy, and for that, considering uh, machine learning and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. We are doing a, I mean, there are 500 people involved in G34 right now developing standards for uh, wow. how to use AI in, in uh, uh, aerospace. The EASA and uh, Europeans, I think, ahead of uh, Americans in this regard, They've published a roadmap. ESA has published a roadmap on AI in aerospace. They're working on another uh, big document. So together, I think between uh, what we are doing here, with, between the Silicon Valley and all the startups, there are probably more than 100, maybe 150 uh, companies that are developing either systems that are flying, they're going to fly, uh, they have already flown, and one of them has already been certified. All I'm saying is this new aircraft systems, uh, the, 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 the linkage to that with, with uh, AI is very close. And I think we, are, we will see a lot uh, in, in that regard. And also in uh, uh, other areas, ground-based systems also have uh, 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 AI uh, embedded in them. Uh, uh, Euro control, which is the which is the uh, uh, traffic uh, uh, side of uh, the European regulatory agencies, has also been employ uh, uh, employing AI-based systems to do some of the route mapping, etc. So th that this is a bright future. I think we ought to be there along with the rest of the community. Yeah, and that's interesting. So it sounds like it crosses multiple sectors between aerospace, ground vehicle, air traffic control. Uh, it's really relevant all over the place, wouldn't you say? Yes, AI is definitely mm -hmm. relevant all over the place. In fact, one of the, um, uh, we, we just were in discussions with, uh, with a ground-based committee to develop mm -hmm. uh, some kind of a special issue on, uh, on, 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 EV tolls are really drones that are coordinating their operations along with certain ground vehicles. For example, mm -hmm. for reconnaissance, they're, they're in constant communication with the ground vehicle. So that would be an interesting, uh, uh, I, I don't know how many papers we'll get on that. Maybe Kim can tell us some more about that, but that's something that uh, we, are, uh, we are definitely uh, looking at. So that coordination between the ground and the air is very key. Have you, in, in your experience, have you seen a lot of collaboration between aerospace and ground vehicle in the past? Okay. Very much so. I mean, one of the things that was mentioned was HM1, of which I am a past chair and I'm an active member. What we are trying to do is every standard that we are developing within the aerospace uh, uh, sector, we are trying to figure out if that is applicable to uh, uh, the ground vehicles as well. I will mm -hmm. highlight something called uh, 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 JA6268, which was a, a standard that we developed recently, an ARP actually, it's a recommended practice. We wrote a couple of years, uh, I'm going to say 
a year and a half ago probably on health ready components and that we specifically called a JA instead of an ARP. Uh, uh, it's a joint uh, document that spans both aerospace and ground vehicles. So we are for every document that we publish, we're trying to see if that has got relevance to uh, the ground vehicle. So yeah, and other committees are doing the same thing. So this is this is an important development, I believe, where we are trying to yeah. uh, bridge that gap. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Um, so I know that there's a lot of important key elements to what makes these special issues important to industry. Can you think of one or two that make them that really stick out to you? Why are they important to industry and why is it important to talk about today? Oh, I, I mean, look at the other one, for example, on uh, unmanned uh, air vehicles that's mm -hmm. or air systems. That has implications for the autonomy. That has uh, implications on how the uh, air traffic is managed. It has implications on the supply chain behind that because, I mean, today we make, I don't know, a couple of thousand uh, aircraft a uh, uh, year uh, mm -hmm. in, in the large uh, category. We, we will be making tens of thousands uh, when we talk about small drones and uh, UAVs. So, the, the supply chain aspects of that will become very important as well. And therefore we have, for example, for this spe special issue, we have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, PK from NASA Ames, who's a special editor, uh, guest editor, because we wanted, thank you. We wanted uh, that aspect, the supply chain aspect of it to be highlighted as well. Right. And he's an expert on that. Okay, excellent. Um... Let's see, I had a couple other questions for you and I know we have some in the chat window. Uh, you talked about, um, let's see, areas of current focus and then the mm -hmm. ones that you wanna focus on in the near future. Can you pick two in the near future that you're excited about? Oh, okay. I mean, I, I am excited about model-based oh. uh, methods, uh, model-based, yeah. uh, that, that's, that's my field. So I really like that. Uh, However, I, I think people will be really excited about electric propulsion, autonomy, and right. uh, and and, and uh, uh, the use of AI for sure. So, but they are all related in some ways. I mean, you can't do AI without model-based methods. I don't think in the future you can do certification without model-based methods. So everything is kind of related. So it's it's tough to pick just two. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Um, so from an academic standpoint, how would you suggest a student or faculty member utilize some of the articles within the aerospace mm -hmm. journal? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, <laughs> Kim is not going to like this when I say, but we are not that much of an academic uh, journal. We have a okay. bigger focus in the in the industry. A lot of the, I, I think it's changing a little. We used to do a lot more uh, of papers from conferences. We have stopped doing that. Papers that are published in our journal now are have to be uh, 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 written for the journal. So the I think the technical uh, quality of the papers has gone up. Uh, but we are definitely a, 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 a more practically oriented, industrially oriented uh, journal. Uh, so why is this good? It is good because we have papers that students can use. Uh, uh, to inspire them to do better research, right. it's it's one thing to sit in the university and and, and I, I'm a I'm I'm a visiting professor at uh, uh, at uh, Cranfield and at uh, uh, UConn, University of mm -hmm. Connecticut. So I do come across uh, students who these days it's changing. When I went to school, I think it was a lot more of uh, pie in the sky research. We, I, I could sit and do all my work on a piece of paper with mathematical uh, theorems and proofs. That is no longer the case in engineering. We have to be practical. And I believe that our uh, journal gives uh, students many areas where they can actually be inspired to work on real practical uh, 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 problems that the industry faces. So that's one, definitely one uh, aspect of it. Uh, to Kim's point, I think we are definitely go becoming more cited. We are rising up in the ERC and uh, etc. So, uh, 
even for academics from what the metrics that they uh, consider important i think we are we are getting there uh, if not now we will be there fairly uh, soon in the future so we will have both the practical aspects as well as the uh, credibility that the academics need for example to get tenure etc so we are working on that as well it will take a little more time but uh, uh, we'll get there but i think the focus of being uh, uh, so Kim says that our site scores have improved, which is fantastic, because that is important. I mean, I know we can we can we can say that we are we are a practical journal and we don't want we don't really care about site scores. That, that's not true. We have to balance the two, and we are trying to do that. Right, that makes sense. So there was one question from the audience. It mm -hmm. says, "How do you compare the SAE Journal of Aerospace with the AIAA journals? Similarities, differences, and uniqueness." Good question, and I think that sort of follows from what uh, I was just saying. Mm -hmm. AIAA journal has been around for God knows how many years. It's mm -hmm. it's it's considered sort of the 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 golden standard for uh, aerospace journals, and the, it does attract a a lot of uh, uh, good papers and an audience. I mean, my my goal is to uh, at least equal them. In our credibility and the and the level of uh, papers that we get, uh, when do we get there? We'll get there. But yes, I mean, I if you ask me for my uh, uh, objective opinion, yes, AI AA journal is a, uh, is more well known. However, we are getting there, but we have a different focus. We are not as ac academic as them. We are definitely a little more. Uh, uh, practical and industry oriented so that's our niche and we we will use that uh, to uh, to have a little uh, sort of the, the, that's where we will that is our area of influence as opposed to what AIA AA does right um, so you had mentioned that obviously a lot of the newer technologies that you want to focus on we need more associate editors how does one become an associate editor? Well, email me, email uh, the journal. I think there is a, a email, generic email that you can use, or you can uh, talk to Kim or myself, or talk to any of the uh, associate editors. A lot of uh, suggestions we get are from the current associate editors. So just have them uh, talk to us. Yeah, we are open to all kinds. We already have a list of people that uh, we are uh, uh, reviewing along with our current uh, list of uh, AEs. So we, we will come up with, we keep constantly, like I said, we constantly add uh, associate editors to the editorial board and we'll continue to do so. Excellent. And Kim did share some information in the chat window in case yes. anybody's interested in reaching out. Um, I don't see any other additional questions about the journal. Do you have any closing comments about the future uh, journal articles coming out in 2021? I, I can only say that uh, <laughs> this is we, we're just going to go bigger and better. And uh, yes, there is one that is coming up on digital twin digital threads that we are considering, and that that may be towards the end of next year. Okay. Uh, some kind of an announcement will come out maybe in the fall about that special issue. Excellent. But yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, let's let's go into the future together. Yeah, I like that. Um, well, thank you so much for your volunteering your time to talk with us today. I really no appreciate problem. it. Uh, if any of you still have additional questions for Ravi, please post them in the chat window. We'll make sure we get to them. Uh, make sure you download the in the handout section as well, because as I mentioned, we linked out all of these various titles that we were referring to. And Ravi's got a ton of other publications with SAE all in the uh, same realm, especially the edge research reports, wouldn't you say? It's a kind of deals with those unsettled technologies. Um, so right. excellent. Well, thank you so much again for your time. Looking forward to seeing those special issues come out uh, probably early next year. Hey, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.